Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today to take a look on how to put the Raspberry Pi OLED screen with some really interesting informations, which at this moment is showing me the IP, the CPU usage and temperature, and also the memory and the disk usage, which is just awesome. On the last video, and I will leave a link right over here, we took a look on how to assemble this really cool case. And there are at least two versions, one with the UPS, which is the one that I've got right over here, and one without the UPS. So I'll try to leave two links down below with the two different versions because the price is different. And both of them include this OLED display, which is just really cool. Now, that being said, on the last video, what I did was follow a little bit of the guide that they have regarding the OLED. And it gave me different information, which I can show you on screen. And to me, it didn't mean much. And honestly, I set myself to learn a little bit more. And one of my goals is to put on the OLED the information regarding the UPS battery right over here. But to go there, I want to understand. I just don't want to read the tutorial and do it. I need to understand. So what we are going to do today, we are going to configure this display right over here in a very simple way. Just copy and paste what I'm going to share with you. But with this small exercise, we will be able to learn a little bit more. And then in the future, we just need to learn how to modify the script so that instead of this information, we can show any other information that we want. So if this seems fair to you and interesting, let's move ahead. Now, I will try to leave a link for the official page where it will mention the way that you should proceed to get the information that I had on the last video. This one right over here, either you can check out the link down below, which will be for a text file that I did create it with the information really concise. We just need to copy and paste, which I will show how to do that. Or even easier, if you are already on your Raspberry Pi and you want to follow up from there, then I will show you how to open that file. Now, once we have the Raspberry Pi running, which in my particular case was a clean installation, so there will be updates that will take longer time. But once we are there, what we are going to do is to open the browser. And once we have the browser open, you will type in the address that I have right over there, which is a bitly short link. So just type that. And once you type it, you will have access to the text file that I did create. Now, once we have that open, we will open a terminal window and let's start copying and paste. So let's th copy the first one, which is a sudo apt get update. This is a really quick one. The second one, if you have a brand new SD card like mine, it will take a little bit more. But once it finishes, we just need to press or copy sudo reboot or write down sudo reboot to reboot the machine. Once it reboots, we will go to the fourth line of command, which is a sudo apt get install python3 pip. Once we do that, we go to the next one and probably will be a bit boring, but there will be just a few things that I will need to explain besides copy and paste. So just have a little bit of patience. Once we finish this one, then we will need to go to the next one, which is the upgrade setup tools. And that is it. Then we need to change directly with the CD command. After that, sudo pip3 install upgrade add a fruit python shell. And after that, we will copy the next one, which is a bit longer with a link to download from the GitHub and it will do its thing. Once it finishes, once again, sudo python3 raspberry blinker.py. This one will take longer and at the end, it will prompt a yes or no and we will say yes. So it will reboot. And at this moment, we are going to check if everything is okay in terms of connectivity, in terms of software and so on and so forth. And for that, we just need to copy and paste this one, which is the sudo i2c detect. And to be 100 precise correctly, according to what I've read, it would need to show only 3c. But in my particular case, as you can see on screen, I've got other numbers on that table right over there. And I did a lot of tests. I did check my cables. Everything is working just fine. So if you have something similar to mine, 
you are just fine. If you have an empty table, then no. Or if you have the table full of numbers, then no. And probably it is a wire that it's not well connected or there is something that it's not activated and we are going to activate. So if you have like mine, you are okay. You don't need to do this step that I'm going to show right now. Different situation Then what we are going to do is to copy the next uh, command line which is the sudo raspy config and right there on config I didn't note down so I can't recall um, very well but we just need to enable i2c so we just need to go to the menu and I will try to slow down on the video so that you can check it out once we enable then we can reboot the machine and if we try the code once again the one that we tried before the sudo i2c detect minus y1 it should look what i had on screen so now we can move on now let's copy the next line of code which is the pip3 install adafruit circuit python ssd 1306 and once it's finished let's copy and paste the next one and once again let's copy and paste the other one which is the clone github mk elements all that stats and then uh, once we do that we will need to navigate to the other um, directly by cd oled stats and at this moment on the next line of code when i copy and paste which is basically python3 space stats.py what should happen and what will happen is that your oled will light up with all this information which is just great so it is this simple just copy paste copy paste and then there is a small step here and there that you need to pay attention as i mentioned that is it now at this moment there's only one issue which is not really nice is if i turn off my raspberry pi what happens is that when it comes up it will not run the script so without the script the screen will be just blank and that's a bit boring because we want to start or turn it off and then once it turns on to have everything running fine right so we just need a few more lines of code actually two i think so what we are going to do is uh, to copy the next line of code which is chrome tab minus e now right over here i would suggest that instead of using the same terminal window just close that window and open a new one because in my tests I did have a few issues and they were solved by closing an in window and opening another terminal window. Now you don't need to copy, you can uh, write your own Chrome tab space minus E. And if it's the, the first time that we run a Chrome tab, it will ask us which one we want to open. I did choose none if I'm not mistaken and it worked just fine. So you can choose the same as I did and once it opens um, the Chrome tab what we will do is to go down the text till the end and then copy the line of code that we have right over here and copy also the next line of code and paste down below. Now we just need to do two more things one of which is to close this script and save it and the other one is to copy the font and also the script from the folder called OLED stats and put those on the upper level folder. Once we paste there, that is it. Our Raspberry Pi with the OLED is ready. And now we can just turn it off completely. And once we boot it, what happens is that everything will run at the background without messing anything. And we will have always this screen right over here with this information, which is really really nice so guys hopefully this was easy simple and a first step to understand how it works so that we can on the next one customize the script and hopefully get the information with this particular case right over here which has a new ps the information of the battery the charging level the voltage and so on and so forth which is something really interesting now if the video was helpful in some way don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen my name is Huerto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one